guys, it's Voodoo Robes and today I'm going to talk to you about 9 mistakes of Shibari beginners that you need to avoid. When people want to start Shibari, they just watch a tutorial and they start. This is not a very good approach and I'm going to cover just common mistakes that people make and so you can avoid it and you can maybe learn something. So mistake number one is that some people have no idea what parts of the body they need to avoid. And this is really a big mistake. This is important because you can hurt somebody. <laughs> you need to at least look at the nerve map to figure out what you can tie and what you cannot tie. A very quick overview. You cannot tie close to the joints, close to the elbows. Don't tie here because there's joints and you can tie like here but not right here. Avoid armpits, elbows, knees. Look at the nerve map or look at the blog posts about shibari safety. I put the link in the description. It's an SNM post which is brilliant. If you start doing gote, he has a huge post to read about safety of this tie. So next mistake that people make is uh, they start learning from difficult videos. For example, you see a pretty harness and you're like, yay, I'm gonna do it. And you can do it. Yeah, I'm not saying that you cannot, you can. If you see a difficult knot, you might make a variation of that knot. And that variation might be a little bit dangerous, for example, if that knot that is shown doesn't tighten up but your knot does, it can lead to some troubles. What I would recommend is starting from easy videos or buying a video course, which is of course better because if you buy a course, you are given the theory and the easy knots and it goes from the easy ones to the hard ones, right? To the difficult ones. And it's all made for you to learn. All the riggers that I talked with on my Shibari TV say that even if you learn by video, it's all right, but you need at least one or two private or group sessions. So you make sure that what you learn doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> Taking a real class makes a real difference. Or at least an online class, we're all in quarantine. Number three, tying suspensions before perfecting your nevadza, which is floor work. Suspensions are dangerous and difficult. Even if some knots seem doable to you, it's better if you try all of this on the floor and then you do half suspensions when like some part of the body is suspended. And then when you are sure that you are doing it right, when you have taken at least one class or real or online, doesn't matter, and your teacher told you, okay, your knots are right, then you can do suspensions. Never start with suspensions. I will say it again and again so nobody starts from suspensions. I always recommend to do stuff on yourself before doing it to others. Do what you can do. Of course, you can't tie some things on yourself. But for example, hip suspensions or leg suspensions, feet suspension, you can tie it on yourself and check how that feels. Mistake number four, not taking into consideration models, fears and desires. You need to talk to your model before the session. You can't just invite a person and do whatever. You need to at least know what a person doesn't want to be done to him. That's the main thing here, I guess. <laughs> Another thing is that you need to ask for some physical conditions. For example, somebody can't be tied with like left leg, but right leg is fine. And you need to know that because if you don't, and if a person doesn't tell you, ask questions. Because people sometimes don't really remember what they have to, t to tell you. But if you ask questions, you won't have any problem because people will answer. If you ask the right questions, you won't have any problem because people would answer and you would know what to do and what not to do. To learn more about safety, you can download my free PDF about safety uh, here, link below. So you read stuff and you know about it. <laughs> Mistake number five, trying to show off. Shibari is not a kind of art where you need to show off. For example, you have a session, you get a model that is like, hey, I want suspensions, but you are not sure if you can do these suspensions. You want to look 
cooler in front of the model and that's why you try doing suspensions. Of course it might be alright, but on the other hand you might make a really huge mistake. A person will get hurt. What I want to say here, if you are not sure that you can do it, don't do it. Try it on yourself first and then do it on another person. <laughs> and it is totally okay to say no to a model. If a model wants something that, it's, that you just can't do yet, it doesn't mean that you are bad. It just means that you need to say, sorry, I will learn it for the next time, but now let's do this or this or this. And she will be okay. She won't get like a fat she or he or they. They won't get offended. They will be very respectful that you care about their safety. And it takes courage to say no, right? <laughs> Mistake number six, making the knots too tight. Every time you tie somebody, you need to check that your two fingers or even three fingers can get in between your model's skin and rope. For example, I have a rope here. It is tight, but if I put my fingers, it can go around and this should be it. This should be the thing. This is what I'm talking about. The next thing is using bad rope. I really think that it's better to use good rope from the beginning because good rope hurts skin less and also it feels better in your hands and you would like the process much better if you are working with good rope. And the last thing that I want to mention here is that some people try to make their partner, for example, want to get tied up by pushing. You should not push somebody to it. You just have to wait. You have to explain it to the person and wait till the moment when a person wants to do it and or is ready to do it. It probably will happen if you are into this, your partner will understand it and will get into it or at least will be like, okay, let's try it. So no pushing, please. Let me know in comments what you think about it. If you have anything else to add, please add. We need to at least try to make shibari practice safer especially now when it's getting kind of a mainstream and more and more people are trying it on themselves or on their partners and sometimes they don't really think about the safety aspect. So I will be very happy if you like the video and help me to spread the word. Let's make it safer. I hope you have fun with ropes. Bye bye.